Hi friends, I'm Matt Jeffs, the Global Ergonomist here for Tamiki Ergonomics Education. Welcome to this video on the revised NIOSH lifting equation, a valuable ergonomic tool for assessing manual lifting. The revised NIOSH lifting equation was designed to evaluate risk of injury with manual lifting. It takes into account multiple factors like load weight, lifting frequency, lifting distances, and much, much more. By understanding and applying the revised NIOSH lifting equation, you can make it work for you. It'll help you make informed decisions about optimizing lifting conditions and enhancing workplace safety. The revised NIOSH lifting equation is designed to arrive at a recommended weight limit for a lifting task. The recommended weight limit represents the weight that most healthy workers could handle without an injury. The formula for the recommended weight limit calculation employs a numerical model. The risk factors, including the load, the distance components, the angles, and frequency are each given a numeric value. Calculating our recommended weight limit will repeat a three-step process for each task variable. Committing simple tasks like this to memory will make the entire process smoother, easier, and far more accurate. Start by first collecting field measurements for all six components of the equation, then perform these three simple tasks again and again. Plug each field measurement into its dedicated conversion table. Pluck each variable's conversion multiplier from its respective conversion table and plug each variable's conversion multiplier into the recommended weight limit calculation. Remember to follow this approach for each component to ensure accuracy and speed in the calculation. Now, let's talk about each component in our recommended weight limit calculation with an example of two warehouse workers loading a pallet jack with stock. First off, look at task variable number one. That's the horizontal location measurement from the center of a line between the inner angle bones to the center of a line between the middle knuckles of the hands. We collected a field measurement for the horizontal location, and in this case, the horizontal reach is 17 inches. Remember the three-step process. We plug the 17-inch horizontal reach field measurement into the horizontal conversion table. We pluck the horizontal multiplier from the horizontal conversion table, and we plug the horizontal multiplier, in this case, 0.59, into the equation. Next, let's review risk variable number two. This is the vertical component of our recommended weight limit. The vertical location of our lift is defined by the vertical height between the floor and the midpoint between those two large middle knuckles on both hands. We collected a field measurement for the vertical location too. In this case, the vertical distance was 40 inches. Again, we rely on the three-step process. We plug the 40 inch vertical field measurement into the vertical conversion table. We pluck the vertical multiplier from the conversion table and we plug the vertical multiplier, in this case 0.93, into the equation. Now, let's look at risk variable number three, the vertical travel distance of our calculation. Vertical travel distance of our lift is defined as the vertical distance traveled between both hands, and this goes between the origin and the destination of the lift. We collected a field measurement for the vertical travel distance in our example, and in this case, it didn't travel very far, five inches. As with each variable, it's important we, one, plug that vertical travel distance measurement into the vertical travel distance conversion table. Then we pluck the vertical travel distance multiplier from that conversion table, and we plug the vertical travel distance multiplier, in our example, 1.0, into the equation. Next, we include number four, the asymmetry in lifting risk variable. And in our calculation, the asymmetric modifier is defined by lifts that start or end outside of our midline of our bodies. We collect a field measurement as always, and for our asymmetry angle, in our example, it's 105 degrees. We plug the 105 degree asymmetry angle measurement into the asymmetry angle conversion table. Then we pluck the asymmetry angle multiplier that from that conversion table, and we plug it into our asymmetry angle in the equation. In this case, it's 0.66. Now it's time to move on to number five, our frequency multiplier. 
Our frequency multiplier allows us to determine A, the number of lifts per minute, and B, the length of time the lift takes. Our lifting frequency is defined by the average number of lifts per minute over a 15 minute period based on standard work sampling from an overall work pattern. Our lifting duration categories include short duration, moderate duration, and long duration based on continuous work time versus recovery time patterns. We collected a field measurement for the lift frequency in our example, and it's eight lifts per minute for one to two hours. Remember our three-step process. We plug that lift frequency measurement into our lifting frequency conversion table. We pluck the lift frequency multiplier from that conversion table, and we plug the lift frequency multiplier, in our example, 0.35, into the equation. We finish up with our last variable, hand-to-object coupling. Through field observation, we assess coupling as good, fair, or poor based on overall effectiveness throughout each lifting task. We collected a field observation for the coupling quality in our example and found it to be poor, or a three, because there were no handles. It was isometric lifting with friction. One final time, we plug that coupling quality field observation of three into our coupling quality conversion table. We pluck the coupling quality multiplier from that conversion table. We plug that coupling quality multiplier, in this case 0.90, into our equation. Once all of our task variables have been converted, we run our calculation to arrive at our recommended weight limit. For our example, that recommendation is 5.8 pounds. Our final task variable is to add our actual load of our actual boxes in our example, which in this case is 22 pounds, to arrive at our lifting index. This 22 pound value is the numerator on our lifting index equation. The denominator of our calculation is our 5.8 pound recommended weight limit. We divide our 22 pound actual load weight by our recommended 5.8 pound weight limit to arrive at a quotient. In this case, it's 3.8. This is our lifting index. Our lifting index priority scale tells us this lift may exceed the capabilities to safely perform the lift for nearly all workers. So redesign of this lifting task is highly recommended. The use of the lifting index in ergonomics should be self-evident. Lifting index is both a priority ranking and a success ranking. We use it to both choose our battles and to win those campaigns. So first, our lifting index helps us identify risky lifting jobs by pinpointing risky lifting tasks. It offers us a quantified relative value that we can compare between two or more jobs on our ergonomic to-do list. And it ranks risk as a numerical value to base our risk management deployment in our ergonomic Gantt charts. This keeps us focused. So how does the recommended weight limit and the lifting index aid in our ergonomic improvement? Well. First, single multipliers in our recommended weight limit equation help us to pinpoint job risks. Second, we can adjust the load weight or the task variables to make each job safer. Third, a lowering of lifting index means more workers can do a task or job safely. That alone improves staffing for that particular job. Now, for demonstration purposes, our example here was admittedly a simple one. The NIOSH lifting equation can be used for more complex or repetitive tasks, but that's outside the scope of this video. If you find manually using the revised NIOSH lifting equation a bit cumbersome or clunky for most day-to-day -day ergonomic operations, we've got you covered. Tamiki Ergonomics provides AI solutions that make using the revised NIOSH lifting equation faster, simpler, and easier than ever before. So feel free to reach out to learn more. Until next time, this is your global ergonomist, Matt Jeffs, for Tamiki Ergonomics Education, reminding you to use AI to work smarter, not harder. See you next time, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.